pass that skill along the way. And I still have to learn from people. Just as in our Christian life, Brother Phil, we still have to learn a daily walk. We need to be mentors and teachers, and we also need to accept teaching. Now, Moses was our first example in the Bible as far as somebody that had to lead. He was actually the first great teacher. He had the whole children of Israel. As he brought them out of Egypt, he would have them in the camp. Tonight, we're in the camp. And when, when I started out, I apologized for not mentoring some, and I thank others for mentoring me. Tonight, we need to help one another in this battle. Yes. This is a serious battle we're facing tonight. Had Moses not took Joshua aside here, he wouldn't have knew what was going to happen. I'm sure... That, that he explained more and more. And, and Joshua got to watch Moses as he went through the battles with those children of Israel. Some of them's tougher than others. Tonight, some of them's tougher to teach. I know I'm a hard head, and I have to be learned the hard way a lot of times. But listen, folks, if somebody's trying to help you, be able to be taught. Listen. Listen to the Word of God. Be able to be taught. So tonight, do you want to be a good teacher, or do you want to be one that can be taught? And number one, we see uh, here when Moses come to the point in time to pass the torch to Joshua in verses one through three. You see that, folks? He had to pass it on. He was going to die. What did he do? He took him aside. Well, someday, some of you guys are going to have to be there. And if you're not able to accept good teaching and preaching, you cannot accept the position. Sometimes criticism is not bad, Lance. You're right. And sometimes overcritically hurts people. Right. So you got to learn to work with them. The Bible says the sincere miracle of word for the babe and meat for the older. Right. When you're younger, you need to start smaller, but you need to want to grow and be taught in this thing. At this point in Moses' life, he was fixing to go. But Joshua accepted that he could take teaching. To ever be a teacher, you've got to first accept teaching. A, a teacher has to go to college for three or four years to become a teacher before she can go teach her children at school. You need to get rooted and grounded in this Word of God so you can be taught. You need to show up for Sunday school Wednesday night and Sunday night because you can learn something. It's serious about that. And when you can't be here... Find out what was going on. It bothers me because I didn't get to hear Brother Lance preach Wednesday night. I hate to get sick and miss this. There's something I know I missed. We need to keep up with this stuff. That's what God sent us these people for, folks, is to learn. But first of all, you've got to be able to want to learn. There has to be a point when the young people has to step up and take over for the older. Our pastor has taught us to, to be hard chargers. That's what he's wanting us to do, to be like him. And you'll soon find out that's not a bad thing either, to be like somebody. Amen. So tonight, what's wrong with wanting to be taught? Because there's going to come a point in our life, Lance, we can't do it no more. Amen. There's going to come a point when it might be Brother Phillips or Josh or Bill or a little man here, Gavin. It might be a time in their life when they've got to step up and be the preacher. So now's the time to start teaching. Now's the time as parents to suck it up here so you can give it to them. Amen. There has to be some point in time that it has to change, the guard has to change. Yes. So no one we see that tonight. You've got to be able to be taught. And then uh, number two... We need to give a clear advice to be a good mentor. Verses 4 through 8. He's telling him to be strong and full of courage. We won't read it again for time's sake. We read that the other week. He's telling him what he's going to have to do. we got to give good, sound advice to be the teacher, Lance. Yes. You Sunday school teachers, when you're in there teaching, it's important that you do not give wrong advice. We are leading them on a journey here tonight. Mom and Daddy, it's important that you give those children good, strong advice. And then here's the kicker. Friend, 
It's important that you be a friend that gives good advice and not go along with what they're saying, Buzz Doug. Because sometimes we can go along with what they're doing and hurt them. But what's wrong with telling them the right thing? There's nothing wrong with it. I if it makes them mad, they'll soon find out if they really want to learn. That goes back to number one. If they want to learn, they'll get better with it. Amen. And trust me, as long as we're in this flesh, we need leadership. Amen. We need leadership. And the Holy Spirit will lead you also if you will follow. If you want to be a good student, listen to the Lord yourself. But you can't find it if you don't read this book. I don't care what anybody says. God can't guide you if you don't know his word. I believe that with all my heart. Joshua knew what he was doing, Brother Lance, as he was going. He knew what was what the path he was on. I believe that tonight. I believe we need to give good, strong, godly advice. And when we're teaching or preaching, let's try not to get off on something that ain't right. Sin is sin. You cannot cover sin with anything but the blood of Jesus Christ. And when sin is happening, we're supposed to stand against sin. Out here in the public, if Brother Philip sees me out here partaking with a sin or sees me not telling people about sin, he's going to say, Tim don't care. So as far as our worldly living, we need to take a stand out there as far as our appearance out there and how we live. It doesn't take long before people quit cussing in front of you and drinking and doing all the stupid things that they want to do if you live right. right. They'll start understanding what you're trying to tell them. Come on. People can be still one to the Lord today with good godly advice if you want to. That's the whole trick. Do we want to be good mentors? Or do we want to be good students also? Bless you. And then thirdly, a good mentor uses the instruction method. What about that? Have you ever put a bicycle together and have four bolts left over and then it fell apart the next day? You know why? You didn't use instruction. When you're trying to fix a broken home or a broken marriage or a torn relationship, how can you give anybody advice? How can you lead somebody to the Lord Jesus Christ, Sister Bonnie, without the correct manual? How can I tell a person how to get saved if I've never read it myself? That's just like putting that back together. They'll never get it. You'll never get fixed right. But if you use that Bible and show them and try to help them, they'll get the right idea then. You have got a perfect plan in front of you tonight. If you've got a 1611 King James Bible, you've got the perfect plan tonight. That's all you need to get this thing rolling tonight. All you need to do, folks, is use the proper instructional book. This is it. Yeah. It's perfect. Wow. And you know what Jesus told them over there? He said, you do err by not using the Scriptures, by not knowing the Scriptures or reading. You know why? He was teaching them, and they acted stupid. That's what happens to a lot of Christians, saved people. I'm not talking about just lost people. I'm talking about saved people. They're saved. They, they know they got saved, but they don't know nothing else, my Brother Lance. I want to know more about my Jesus. You remember the song we sang? I want to know more about my Lord. How am I going to learn it if I don't do this? How can I teach you if I don't know nothing? It's important to know. You say, well, I may never be a Sunday school teacher or preacher. You may never be. But look beside of you tonight. That person beside of you might struggle someday and need encouragement from that manual. Their old motor might be broke and you might need to help them. Amen. I don't care if it's husband or wife or friend or neighbor or whatever. We all go through troubles in this life. Amen. And the only way you can help somebody really, really help them is with the Word of God. That's right. Amen. Every word out of every word out of God's mouth is true. Every word out of mine is a lie. That's what he says. 
That's bad. We've got to take this book. If we take our own opinions tonight, we will mess it up every time. How can I tell you how to pray at first if I don't know how to pray? Where do I learn to pray? How do I know it's right to take my hat off when I pray? Because the Bible said it's right. How do I know to go get a haircut today? Because he said it was a shame. Does nature not, nature not? How do I know those things? I mean, these things like little things. But, brother, that's what keeps us on the right track, by knowing the whole thing. Yes. By knowing the whole thing. Yes. This half thing ain't getting it. How could we have four million little doctrines running around out here, little churches, take a verse, take a fit? Not the whole counsel of God. That's what they're doing, Lance. They're perverting this Bible by not using it all. It's not right. You've got to read it in Genesis to Revelations, folks. Take a little time. Mama. It won't kill you, I promise you. Last more. I love to read Sports Illustrated, Stock Car Magazine, and all that. But it ain't as important as this. It will not help me when times get tough like this day. Amen. So you've got the proper man to use it. If you're going to be a good student or a teacher, you still have to use the instruction man. The Bible. Right. And to be a good man, bring them to church. Boy, that's pretty clear in verses 12 through 14. He said, Gather the people, men, women, and children, and thy stranger that is within thy gates, that they may hear and that they may learn and fear the Lord your God and observe to do all the words of this law. And not only should you read it and believe it, you should come and learn more of it and gather together. Amen. Fail not to assemble thyself. I understand that a lot of people think it's all right to meet at Walmart on Saturday night, but you're not going to get no preaching going on there or teaching. Let's come to church. Did you see that? I, I like that part where he said, Thy stranger. Yes, sir. That means it's all right to invite a friend. Amen. Amen. It ain't all about us. Even though I love this crowd and I love the faithfulness of this crowd, we still need more. Amen. We should be self-supporting, self-propagating. Yes, we are a local yes. church. Wow. We should bring more people in those doors with us. I'm guilty as the next one. I do invite people. But I can invite a whole lot more. I'm sorry I don't work hard enough for my brethren. I'm not as good men as I need to be. And that's what we all need to work and pray. We need to we need to step our game up to the next level. Lance, we need to hit the ball a little harder. We need to work harder for the Lord Jesus Christ tonight. He needs somebody that's willing, that is willing to teach others and help others. And as a good example in this church, and, I don't, and everybody here probably knows it, but Lance and Helen really work hard for these children. Amen. And when y'all should give them a pat on the back. There's nothing wrong with th thanking them for doing their job. Amen. And that's, they, they feel like it is their job. They don't look at it's a labor of love, not a job. They like to do it because of the Lord. They don't want to see these young families get hurt or messed up. Amen. Thank you. Amen. I thank you for leading this choir. That's a serious job. I thank you for what you just did tonight with this little fellow. You've encouraged him. Thank you for that. Doug, I thank you for the slaps on the back you give me sometimes, just standing outside on any given night. Brother Stephen, I thank you for letting me take you to the rest home. That is an honor. Brother Dale, Bonnie, you don't know what y'all mean to me tonight, but it is a privilege to have people that want to be here and help me. Y'all did it. Well, Harold, you and the sisters have always been nice to me. And being, I can't, my name is Peggy. They're great and super. And what you do for these children, they may never have a chance again to get to this church. Thank you. And brother and sister Tig, it's been a blessing. And Shirley, you greet me every time coming through that door. And I don't know if I've, if I've ever met anybody I like better than Jeff. <laughs> He's a blessing. He'll talk baseball as long as I want to talk it. But you don't know what that means. It's great to come in here and have that feeling. 
You feel like you're being taught something about that you can use in life inside these four walls. This sanctuary God has given. And then April and Jeremy and, the, and these children. I thank you for bringing those kids to church. I thank you for that. It's a blessing. But I apologize too for not being a friend when you needed one. When you was hurt, I didn't come to see you. And I apologize for that. But you are a friend. And your kids mean a lot to me. In our school at Maple. Lord, I feel sorry for April. <laughs> but thank you for bringing your children all the time and being a friend yes. and talking to me and being nice to me. I wish I could do more for you. There ain't nobody but you and the Lord can work this thing out. And Doug and Aretha, Lord, you don't know what a blessing they've been, but it has been. Like I said, it's that little pat on the back. We can encourage somebody. You say, well, what are you teaching us? You're teaching us to spread love. Amen. What's wrong with a little love? Do you think Jesus was hatred? No. What did Jesus do, Lance? He died that we could live. How much? No greater love than any man. And I feel like you folks have did that for our family. Thank you. And then I thank my wife and daughter for coming with me every week. They've been great. I don't know how I got in this thank you. They ain't putting in my message, but it come out. And I appreciate it. But you know, I've learned a lot since I've been here in a little over a year from you guys about mentoring and being mentored. Lance, have you ever been at a point in your life where you thought you was the great teacher? I've been there. I thought I'd read this Bible two, three, or four times. I know more than I know nothing. I know nothing. I thank God for putting me in a place and I'm getting taught. I thank God for that. And He's put and He's put it in my heart to work on this Word of God harder. That's what I pray. My prayer for you tonight is that your heart will get opened up and receive this word. Amen. And uh, I'll hurry through. Number five, I want us to look over the New Testament. Uh, Ephesians five. Now listen, Paul was probably he said that Paul said this himself. He said he was the chiefest of sinners. Paul said this about himself. And we think he's one of the greatest teachers there ever was. But you know, Paul, to similarities, was a lot like Moses. See, Moses was the first true leader of the children of Israel. When he led on Mount Aaron, he, and he, did, he, he became the first great leader and had no mentor. He had to go in there. He was taught by God. And him and Aaron went before Pharaoh, and he had to take all this on. But what did he do, Lance? He was willing. Yes. So we got to start somewhere tonight, folks. Amen. we got number five in this whole thing. Is you got to start somewhere. You might be doing a lot, but you could probably do a little more. And if you're doing nothing, tonight you got to start somewhere. Ephesians 6, 21. And this is just a few of the people he touched. But you also may know my affairs and how I do and how I do, Titus, a beloved brother and faithful minister of the Lord, shall make known to you all things. Who taught Titus? Who taught him? Amen. Brother Lance, they're going to come a day when we'll, we'll, we want somebody saying that we taught to so they can pass this gospel. <coughs> the Philippians 4.18. But I have all and abound. I am full, having received Epaphroditus, the things which were sent to me, and over a sweet smell of sacrifice, except for the well pleasing of God. Epaphroditus, what was he doing? He was caring for Paul while he was there with the stuff that the folks had sent. What was he doing? He was he was being mentored by Paul. He was willing to be taught. And then here's one of the ones we always look at. It's one of Paul's great pupils, Timothy. Chapter 1, 1 Timothy chapter 1, verse number 2. And to Timothy, my son, in the faith, grace, mercy, and peace from our God and our Father, Jesus, God and our Father, and Jesus Christ our Lord. See, now he said, he's telling him right there. He's wanting him to have grace and mercy and peace. And then he said in the Verse 18, This charge I committed to thee, son Timothy, according to the prophecies which went before on thee, that thou by them mightest war a good 
war to fight. He said those prophecies he told him about and showed him, what was it for, Brother Lance? It was to help him get through this war fire. And tonight, if you're sitting here in front of me and you're saved, you are fighting a war fire. Whether you know it or not, it's a spiritual battle. And trust me, it's getting harder each day. Yes. They're throwing more stuff at you. I, I, I really feel blessed to be born in the era of where I was born because the, the Lord was preached a whole lot more than He is now. That's why I'm telling you tonight, we need to fight this warfare by being able to take it out there. Not just help each other. Discipleship in this church is a great thing, but we need to take it out there to our neighbor. He needs saved too. For God so loved the world that He gave His only begotten Son. Yes. He did. Who did He give Him for? Yeah. The whole world. Amen. Nobody don't have to perish land. Yeah. That's why He did it. And in closing tonight, I ain't got a great baseball story or nothing. But I do got this Bible. And I want us to look at 2 Timothy chapter 2 and a verse 2. He said, the Bible said, And the things that thou hast heard of me, and this is Paul talking, among many witnesses, the same commit thou to faithful men who shall be able to teach others also. Amen. Amen. That's why it's not bad to be like your pastor if he's a good godly man, Lance, or be like your friend. And it's not bad for me to teach one of these boys if I'm teaching them right. And they want to grow up and pass it on like I've taught them. It's not bad to be like somebody that got... T Paul's telling Timothy, it's all right that people know I've done a good thing. Just pass it on. Just pass it on. Tonight, these children out here need to pass it on to their children. And to pass it on to their friends. They're going to, if time tarries, they're going to grow up and have friends at school and they need to know about Jesus. They need to understand that Jesus died for them just like He did for those. So that's the whole thing tonight. We need to keep this torch rolling. We need to disciple one another. We need to care for one another. Sometimes people get out of church just because we fell in the column and get my phone call. And I know that you might think that's a little selfish, but have you ever been home sick and felt bad to see somebody from church with this call? Well, it makes a difference. It sure feels good. It sure feels good tonight to know that you've got a friend that loves you enough that says, I'm praying for you. Amen. Boy, don't that lift you up when you hear those words? I'm praying for you. Yes. Though that helps me more than anything you could ever do. Money, silver and gold, anything you could give me. If you lift me up to the Lord, that means you love me. Amen. It means you think a lot of me. That's something that's not perishable. It'll last forever, those prayers. And sometimes we think, well, God ain't hearing no prayers, but He's here. And He'll answer when He's ready for it. But also tonight, there's one thing I have to mention. You cannot teach nobody, help nobody, unless you've had the blood of Jesus Christ applied to your heart. Amen. Amen. And I know I harp on this every time I preach it. But I don't believe it's right to stand up here and not tell you that you'd go to hell if you died tonight and you didn't know Jesus Christ as your Savior. Amen. And I wouldn't want nobody to do that. It breaks my heart to think about people going to hell. It breaks my heart. I would hate to see, because I didn't tell you, that I wouldn't give you the truth. And you can't help nobody until you know the truth. Bless them. But tonight, you know, I don't know your heart. I, I really don't. I like for Lance to play a song, just play something. And it, it, it ain't about salvation neither. If you're sitting here tonight and you feel like that, you know, you, you just want to get closer to God so you can help others, that's fine too. We need to pray about those things. Like I said when I started, when I apologized, when I said thank you, I knew you'd figure it out. There's some in you that's helped me so much that you'll never know. But there's others I haven't helped enough. And I'm sorry for that. And you might be sitting there tonight thinking, well, I can do more. 
But you might want to come up here and thank God for the person that's helped you. Amen. Surely to goodness, somewhere along the line, somebody's helped you get to this point in your life. Somebody's helped you. So if you would, while they're singing, playing, we'll come together and pray.